Hi, for this video, what I want to talk about is what is a confidence interval? Um, a confidence interval is an interval estimate or a range of values that estimates a population parameter. Most of the po time, the population parameters that we use are the mean or the proportion. So a lot of times we will create a confidence interval for a population mean or a population proportion. Most of the time, we cannot gather all of the information about a specific population. Um, so if we're trying to figure out how a population may vote on a certain issue or which candidate they're going to vote for, most of the time we draw samples from the population and we hope that those samples are representative of the population. So most of the time you hear a confidence interval when somebody's reporting that, say, 45% are going to vote for candidate X with a um, margin of error of plus or minus 3%. So that is an example of a confidence interval. It's just saying that this is what we feel the population is going to do based on the sample. So the level of confidence of your confidence interval is the percentage of intervals created that actually contain the population parameter. So sometimes we get what are known as bad samples or samples that are not representative of the entire population. And so when we're trying to make a conclusion about the entire population, we end up with the wrong decision. So the level of confidence is the percentage that interval actually contains the population parameter. So it actually contains the true mean. So to demonstrate this for you, what I want to do is I want to use a confidence interval simulator. So it will come up with a point estimate for the poppy or for the sample. And so what we're going to start with is for means. I'm going to first look at means. There are um, several different confidence intervals. The most common are for um, population proportions or population means. For this specific one, this is what is known as a Z interval. The Z interval um, you use if you know the population um, standard deviation. So for this one, what we're going to do is this one's centered, and we can change this. It doesn't matter. I could say that the mean is 25. I'm just going to generate one. The sample size is in. So if I have, and I'm just going to show you guys a couple different sample sizes. Um so that you can see what happens to the interval. So this one has a sample size of n, and I'm just going to generate one so that you could see what happens. So if you look at this green value right here, and I click on this, basically what happens is the dot in the middle is the mean of that sample. And then the standard deviation of that sample is 10.055. So if we look at this, this range of value says that based on this sample, we're going to say that the true population mean is between 23.25 and 30.406. So if you look at this, we can see that this interval actually contains the true population mean of 25. So let's say that instead of just one interval, we actually did 100 intervals. And so I'm going to sample. And if you look at this, most of them are green. And if you look at the dot in the middle, those are representing the means of the sample. So the interval estimate comes from the mean of the sample, and then we use a margin of error to go to the end points to figure out what it's in between. And if you notice with these, the green ones mean that they actually contain the true mean of the population. But we have some of these that are in red. So if I look at this one, this sample has a mean of 29.8029. So it was a sample from the population that you could draw, but it happens to be a sample that is not representative of the population. So all of these red ones, if you notice that 95% of my confidence intervals contained the true mean, but we had 5% of them that truly missed. So there's a couple things that change um, your confidence intervals, one of them, or the width of your confidence intervals, so if you look at these, these have a pretty wide range, so from 26 to 33, so that's a pretty large range. Notice what happens to the range when I change my sample size. So let's say that I increased it to a sample of size 100, and I'm going to do the same thing. 
Notice that we ended up with seven of them. So out of a hundred, we had seven of them that did not contain that. So, but if you look at the length or the width of the confidence interval, um, so like I said, I can click on these and we can see that this one missed it just barely, but it did miss it. Um, this one again missed it 25.11, so it was only up by a little bit, but the sample size will decrease the width of the confidence interval. So if you want to be more accurate or to be in a smaller range of values for your interval, you need to use a larger sample size. The other thing, I'm gonna go back to the size 30. The other thing that changes the width of the confidence interval is the level of confidence. So the level of confidence tells us that 95% of the interval estimates, if this were done an infinite number of times, will contain the true mean. Sometimes we have more, sometimes we have exactly, sometimes we have less. It just depends on when I'm doing 100 intervals, that's not an infinite number. So if I change the confidence level to 80%, notice how many times I made a mistake or missed it on this. 80% confidence lowers the number of times the actual uh, interval will contain the true mean. So it narrows it and we notice that we miss quite a bit, especially with 30, it's going to be more likely to happen. If I upped it to 100, we got 14 of them missed. So it wasn't quite 80%, it is more accurate. So the larger the sample size, the more accurate your estimates are going to be because there's less error in them. Um, the smaller the confidence level, the narrower your interval, which means that you're more likely to make the mistake. The default is 95%. Um, so this is the default setting. Notice that this one, four of them missed. So if this was the sample that I had taken from the population, I would have missed the true population mean. Like I said before, there are different types of intervals. Um, you can do a T interval, a Z interval, and as I go through or in this section, I will address all of these. Um, we also have for proportions. So if we have a proportion of the population, it can be from any distribution. Um, so we could say that the probability of success is 0.37. The number in our sample is 100. When I draw this out, it still looks the same as the population mean. It's just that it's dealing with successes and failures because it's binomial. Um, but this would give you the same thing, and this is a 90% is what we ended up with. If I continue to recalculate or to sample, now notice that it's out of 200 and I had 91% of them. Um, because of the fact that this is not centered at 37%, 37 is not centered very well. It's not as likely to happen. So that's why we're ending up with such discrepancies down here. So just to recap, a confidence interval is just a range of values and the level of confidence is the percentage of intervals that if it were to be taken over and over again, that will contain the population parameter. So when you see things like a poll that has been um, given to you and it says that this is the percentage of the population or this is how likely, they're dealing with confidence intervals. As always, thanks for watching. Please make sure to check out all of my other videos.